everyone. I just got some texts from some sweet little kiddos that have been waiting for the two o'clock live. They are ready to paint with Miss Pam. I'm so glad. Um, if you're new, I am Pam Savage with Young at Heart Creations. And I paint on a little bit of everything, wood, canvas, metal, uh, you name it. If I can paint it, I'm gonna paint on it. Before we get started on today's project, which is this cute little Easter bunny. The shape's gonna be just a little bit different than what this one is. This one's kind of on all fours, this one's sitting up, but same process, it doesn't matter. A little bit different shape. And I did see some boys that uh, sent me some texts that they're sitting at the table waiting to paint. If you don't wanna do it in the Eastery colors, you could do it in the camouflage colors or, or anything that you like. You could do it in the browns and, and greens and blacks and tans. It doesn't matter. Hi, Ashley. Ashley's one that sent me a text and showed me all her kiddos are sitting around the table ready to paint. And uh, here in, in Sherman, Texas, we've had a stormy day. It's raining. It's been lightning, thundering. So if we lose connection, that's why. But it seems like it's kind of calming down just a little bit. But um, so glad that you're on here. I know some of you were out, going to go out shopping today and uh, said you would be watching the replay of this. So, so glad to have you. This is what we painted last, uh, the little sunflower. And if you'll notice, I put, um, ended up putting some little dots on it. I just liked it a little bit better that way. We had one the other day that we didn't put dots on, but um, <clears throat> you can just do it in any color you want. I chose to do it uh, yellow. Hi, Marla. Glad to see you. Um, so this is what we did, in, but we didn't quite finish it because we didn't put a hanger on it. So I'm going to show you. I told you I would show you today how to put a hanger on it, and there's several different ways that you can do it. Some people like to drill little holes in it and put um, their wire or their jute in it that way. Um, you could also use ribbon, pretty ribbon. Um, and well, I took it down here, but a lot of times we'll put bows on them or bows on the strings. But today we're just going to put some jute on the back. And this is just, I believe it's Revelation, a Revolution uh, plywood on there. But what I use is a staple gun, just a simple, sta well, actually I swapped it out of my husband's toolbox. But that's what I use. You just want to be real careful because um, it could go through your wood, so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, especially on the, um, if it's the laser cut, the MDF, sometimes it'll go through it. Now you could put a little little block of, um, I think Tamara Bennett has done this. She's put um, cardboard, just rolled it up and put it, folded it up and put it on here so it wouldn't go all the way down. Um, hi Nakia, hope you got all your shopping done. Hi Miss Amber, Amber's my daughter-in-law. Her and Angela are gonna be watching. They're just right down the street from us, but with this coronavirus, we haven't got to hug. I mean, they're literally five houses down from us and we haven't hugged in two weeks, so it makes it a little difficult. But what better on a rainy day like this than to just sit and craft? Okay, so what I use is, um, I like to use the uh, three-ply jute. I just get it at Walmart and you tie an, uh, a knot on each end. You wanna measure, let me come down with you just a little bit. Okay, so you just wanna measure depending on your piece. This is about a 12 inch piece, so I turn it backwards. I figure out what I want to be the top. This one, the way it's painted, it really doesn't matter. So you want to find, now you can do this two ways. You can put it straight across the back like this so that the, the rope does not show, the hanger does not show, just your piece will show when you hang it. Or the way we're gonna do it today, let's go ahead and tie our knots in the end of uh, each end on each side. Just wanna tie a little knot on the end, make sure it's good and tight. Hi Tori, I saw you doing the shading the other night on your live, you're doing really good with it, really good. Your piece turned out real well. I was just telling them all here, it's been storming all day, so a good day to choose to paint. Okay, so the hanger, I've got a knot on both ends. You can leave a little bit hanging out there. And you wanna decide where your middle is for the top. Lay it down, I'm gonna come down just a little bit. So lay it down on your piece. How long, how much of the jute do you want to show? Do you want it way up here with a lot of it showing or down a little bit? So I'm gonna let about, oh, about six inches show. 
and I'm going with the grain of the wood with it. So I've got it here. I'm going to spread it apart a little bit, about five inches or so. And then I got to stand up for this. So get it right up above that knot. Let me turn it around a little bit so you can see it better. So you're going to get it right up above that knot. And remember, not a ton of pressure because you don't want it going through the wood. So just hold it steady. Okay, that's good and tight. So you're gonna make sure you get it even on the other side. Take your finger up here. Where do I want the top part of it to be? Okay, hold it in place, turn it around. And I've already sealed this one, so I'm not worried about scratching paint off when I'm turning it like that. Right above the knot so it doesn't slide around everywhere. Not a lot of pressure. And voila. Okay, so you've got your little hanger. And again, you can do it so it doesn't show. You could do it with pretty ribbon. Um, it's really up to you. There's just so many di different ways that you can do it. But that's how I do most of mine. I do have some of them so they don't show. Um, <clears throat> and I was gonna show you here in the background, this is an Easter bunny that we did. Um, it's on canvas. Let me take it off here so you can see it a little better. It's on canvas. And we did this at the Nashville Live with, uh, with Tamara, uh, Tamara Bennett, and um, actually Heidi. Heidi is the one that, that painted this one. Uh, she, it was her pattern, and we painted with her. But he was so much fun. So um, same, same exact process, just on canvas. Just feels a little different when you, when you do it, when you paint on it. But let's get started on our bunny. And I may, if scheduling works out tomorrow... I may pop on here and we're gonna do something maybe a little little different than painting. So if you're out and about today at Dollar General, Dollar Tree, uh, Walmart, if you happen to be out um, and you see any kind of pretty napkins, just uh, floral napkins, anything that's got some pretty colors in it, we may do some decoupaging tomorrow, depending on how my schedule works out. If we don't do it tomorrow, we will do it next week. But um, <clears throat> If you see, I got these at Dollar General. This is a big Easter egg. Um, I know Easter's tomorrow and probably gonna be too muddy and wet to get out an Easter egg hunt. And with uh, all of the social distancing, you, I know a lot of the Easter eggs have been, Easter egg hunts have been canceled. So we could go ahead and we could just make it Easter anyway. So we've got our Easter bunny today and we can do some decoupaging tomorrow. So if you're out and about and see any pretty springtime, it doesn't even have to be Easter, uh, any pretty floral prints or anything that you see that you like, uh, get a package of napkins and some decoupage. This is from Walmart and it's called uh, Mod Podge and it's the matte finish. So if you want to get that, that's really all you're going to need and some white paint and that's it uh, and an emery board or a little piece of sandpaper. Okay, so that's it for what we might get to do tomorrow. Uh, more than likely we will. So let's get started on this bunny. Okay, remember last week we talked about base coating. Base coating is always the first color that you put on your piece or put on your, uh, your shape or whatever you're doing. Like you might put one coat. It's always the first coat, like this circle here. If I were gonna put two coats on it, I'm gonna base coat it the first coat in purple. Um, so base coat's always your first coat. And hi, Leanne. Leanne's up in Canada. I guess it's kind of cool up there. We're getting storms here, Leanne. Uh, Leanne just had a live class the other night painting a wheelbarrow and some flowers. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. <clears throat> she did such a great job. I got to watch most of it. Okay, so take your bunny. If you don't have the wood bunny, I know some of you uh, are painting on poster board and you've got it traced down on something. So go ahead and do that. So we're gonna paint, uh, we're gonna go ahead and base coat it. Now, if you're doing it on poster board, you really don't have to base coat it because your poster board's already white. But we're gonna get just a little bit of white paint. Remember, you wanna go ahead and always shake it up. But we wanna get a good base coat on it. So let's get some white going here. Now to base coat, I want to use a flat brush, and this one's about, about a half inch, maybe just a little more. You could always use this one. This is a flat tip. On my uh, business page, the uh, Young at Heart Creations, I put you some samples, a picture of some samples of the some of the paintbrushes. That's not near all the shapes, but 
that was some of them to kind of help you but I think for this one I think the half inch uh, this one's a full inch uh, a little more maybe let's see it's a it's a one and a half inch so this is a one inch this one is a one inch um, and it's a flat tip that we're going to base coat with so let's get our base coat going get your white going on there and remember I got my brush just a little bit wet because I don't like to put um, wet paint on my dry bristles it just seems to kind of I don't know it just kind of makes them wear out a little faster so I always wet my bristles the bristles in the brush first and that's the hair part of the of it okay now let me know if you can't see uh, what I'm doing and I can bring the camera down closer trying to get used to all this okay so let's just get some white on there and you want to be sure and do your edges as well because this whole bunny the base coat of him is going to be white so we may even put a second coat on him if that wood is showing through or depending on what you're using so let's just get it on there get it going and what's the old saying? April showers bring May flowers. Well, we should have lots of May flowers around here soon with all the, the rain that we've had. We've had a lot of rain and everything is just, all the trees and grass and everything's just such a beautiful lush, lush green. Uh, one of my favorite times of the year. Next time you're outside, just look at the trees and all the different colors of green there are. You just don't really think about it until you make yourself look at it and think about it. Okay, now I've almost done. I'm just not taking a lot of time on this either. I'm just just getting a good base coat on there. I just base coated my finger. So let's get that tail. And with it being the base coat, it's going to soak that wood up a little bit. I mean that paint up just a little bit. So we'll let that dry a minute. Now let's go down and around and do our edges. And just pat it on all the way around. I think this wood actually that this is from Dollar General I think it's probably more of the it's called poplar wood kind of like what you would make um, oh, the um, little airplanes that you used to put together and fly for the boys it's a kind of a thin and this is layered in several different layers so it's soaking it up pretty good but it's a very lightweight wood okay so got that part done just all the way around just to get that wood covered down be sure and see how I've got the ridges kind of around there you can see it kind of shining around the edge you want to smooth those out as you go because you don't want those ridges drying on there so just kind of smooth it out my daughter Jennifer and you know the new puppy Milo has been with us for a couple of weeks she had to go back to her apartment down um, close to Dallas and get some things done and um, check her mail and everything so they left out yesterday they'll be back tomorrow night or Monday but sure has been quiet around here without that puppy you just don't realize how much company one is until you have them around and how much work one I mean it's just it's just like having a toddler around the house you got to watch all the time what are they putting in their mouth what are they into now <laughs> so they keep you pretty busy Okay, I'm going to need just a little more paint here. I've heard several um, of my painting friends talking about their, some of them are running out of paint. They're having trouble getting supplies. Hi, Lori. Lori Gaston is one of my long, 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 long time friends from church. We kind of raised our kids together. Um, we could tell a lot of stories. We had so much fun together, but glad you're watching, Lori. We're painting an Easter bunny today, and um, this is what our end result's gonna be. If you don't have a wood bunny, you can trace one out right quick on some poster board or paper sack, anything like that that you can just paint along with to learn the techniques. Tomorrow, we're gonna, uh, hopefully, if schedule works out right, um, we will do some decoupaging, Mod Podge, that's all new and to the younger generation right now and Lori will know that you know we did that all the time when we were young but it's kind of like clothes and fashion <clears throat> it all comes back around again all the girls now are just so uh, excited over graphite paper well we used graphite paper 
when graphite paper wasn't cool. We had to use it to, on the old manual typewriters, if we made a mistake, we had to put that graphite paper behind the letter and type it again or use it to erase. But now they're using it for all kinds of fun things. Okay, so we're just about done doing the edges. And you're probably gonna get a little bit on your hand. Just remember, have a baby wipe handy. Baby wipes are your best friend when you're painting. Lori uh, Gaston and Carla King, they have a booth at the How Craft Show that I was telling you about last week that we have in November that I'm trying to get things ready for, but they have a booth and they make a lot of beautiful, beautiful painted wood things. And um, <clears throat> their booth is one of the crowd pleasers. I mean, a lot of people come sometimes just to come to their booth. So they get really busy and they amaze me because they don't do a lot all year long they right before the show right before time for the show they'll all get busy it's kind of a family thing and they'll all get busy and just knock it out real fast and then have the prettiest booth so i haven't had a booth in it for a couple of years or so and i'm going to have another one this year so try to get everything ready for that we noticed um today we had to run um run an errand and the blue bonnets here just just in the last couple of days have started blooming out and they're so so thick this year i guess because of all the rain that we've had they've gotten just the right amount of water um and they are just beautiful okay be sure again be sure and go around smooth those edges out now i'm going to hit this one with the hair dryer just a minute just for the sake of time and i think i am going to put one more coat on it <clears throat> because I can see the wood grain pretty good through this one. So I'm gonna hit it with a hairdryer real quick. That's good and dry. Now remember last week I told you that when you put the base coat on, the first coat of whatever piece that you're painting on wood, it'll make that the wood grain rise up. It gets it kind of moist and it makes it rise up and it's got a little bit of a rough texture. So if you'll take a piece of paper sack or I like to use uh, wax paper, I just wad it up a little bit and then I just wipe it. Really rub it like you would be doing sandpaper, but not sandpaper, or that'll get your paint completely off. I even right around the edges just a little bit. And that kind of calms that wood grain down. And now it's just as smooth as it can be. But I'm gonna put one more coat on it because it's showing through quite a bit. I've seen so many pictures on Facebook of people getting uh, pictures made in their the blue bonnets, but then I've seen all these pictures of, oh, rattlesnakes love blue bonnets, so I'm a little leery of it. <laughs> and we've gone out in them, but I sure do look before I step anymore. We have a lot of rattlesnakes and copperheads in our area. We always see them every year. We usually see some in our yard and... Um, on the road. We live out in the country, so you never know what kind of varmint you're going to see out here. Now, the second coat always goes on much smoother, and it covers better. It doesn't take near as long. Just kind of look over it, make sure you've got it covered good. I know some of you that are watching have been uh, painting a while. Uh, what's your favorite thing to paint on? Do you like to paint on wood or do you like canvas better? Um, a lot, um, I've painted on metal and I love painting on old windows. I've done a lot of that. That's a little bit different. You, uh, I use just the same paint I'm using here, but a little more tedious. I mean, you have to be careful with it. 
how you're painting it or it rubs the paint off if you don't dry it in between and I spray mine a little bit but what do you like to use hi Jeff grab a paintbrush Jeff you need to paint with us uh, when we went to the live in Nashville we had um, two or three husbands showed up to paint with their their wives and and came and they sat and painted and I heard one say no wait a minute I didn't know this was going to end up on Facebook. My hunting buddies had better not see these pictures of me painting flowers. But you know what? Theirs turned out great. It did really, really good. Um, and we had so much fun with them. And I thought, you know, what a good husband. Came, my husband took me, you know, so he got me there. And um, I couldn't have gone without him getting me there. And so I really appreciated that. And I didn't force him to come paint. But he would have if I had begged him to. But... Uh, but he didn't. Okay, I'm going to bump this again right quick with the hair dryer. I mean, I'm going to rub it just a little bit more with that um, wax paper. And again, if you don't have wax paper, you can just use regular paper, uh, paper sack. That'll work. We've always got brom sacks laying around somewhere. Okay, and then just be sure to wipe them off good. Make sure all that paint flakes and everything's off because you don't want that in your brush. We spent yesterday, as soon as I got off work, um, I always, always take our Christmas lights down either the last week of December, I mean the um, second week in January or last week in January because I don't like leaving them up. I think Christmas done, Christmas over, uh, let's get it down, and I don't want hailstorms breaking all my lights. Well, we took them down just yesterday. What is it, April? We just got them down yesterday because of the, it's been either way too muddy or we were in Tennessee or or we were sick or just one thing after another. So we just got our Christmas lights down yesterday. Now my tree came down on time, but not the outdoor lights. And then I hear everybody saying, okay, everybody wants you to turn your Christmas lights on to show support for uh, all of those frontline workers working for the, with the coronavirus. And I just took them down, I'm not putting them back up. But that doesn't mean I don't care, but I'm not putting, when I put Christmas lights up outside, I put Christmas lights up outside, all over the house, all over the shrubs and all around the flower bed. So it's quite the job. Okay. So we got our base coat, it's all white. So you can choose any color that you want. Uh, any th I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four. I've got four different colors that I'm using for my, my circles, my dots. So you can choose any colors you want, but the first thing we're gonna do is paint her, her or his little nose. I think with the eyelashes, we'll call this one a her. So let's get her little nose, and I'm just gonna do that in a, Let's see what this is. Let's do it in a crushed coral. This is folk art. Now, I don't use folk art that often. Uh, a lot of it was given to me. They've got pretty colors, but it's super thick. It's a really, really thick paint. And if you can see me trying to get it off here, but just some kind of a light pink for her nose will work just fine uh, if you don't have the crushed coral. So let me... Now, you see how thick that is coming out? I mean, it, it is real, it's almost pasty, uh, which would be good for some certain projects, I'm sure, but uh, for what I do mostly, I like, I like it to pour a little more liquidy. Okay, and you can use just any brush you want to with this. Let's use a, let's just use a flat brush for it. Get it just a little bit wet. <clears throat> and y'all are gonna have to bother me, I mean, uh, not let my voice bother you today because I'm a little hoarse with all the allergy stuff that's going on. So you're going to have to pardon my scratchy voice. Okay, and I'm just loading it up here on both sides. 
and pick where you want your nose. If it's easier for you, you can draw it with a pencil. I'm just going to take it and right along where that where I think I want the nose, I'm just going to straight up and down, draw it out, and then I'm going to fill it in. And you want to do the edge too. So can you see that? Just a little bit there on the tip where her nose would be. And then I'm going to cover the edges in that color. So take your brush and just like we were dabbing on the white, right where your circle ends, you're just going to come down and dab it. Down, 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 and down to get it marked off where you want it. And then dab your paint in to fill it in. Just make you a straight line and just dab it all the way across there. Yeah, I'm going to put just a little bit more on there to cover that wood grain. And now we've got her nose. So that kind of sets the tone for where we're going to be putting everything. Now for the next part, there's a couple of different ways that you can do the circles. I use the pouncers. And these, these are called uh, spouncers is actually what they're called. This is a one and a quarter inch. They come in several different sizes. Let me see what I've got here. These come in a package of four or five, but here's your one and quarter inch. This would be probably an inch. And here's the tiny half inch. Um, and these don't come off. These pouncers don't come off of this one. Now this is Martha Stewart's brand. They're really good too. These come out so you can wash them really well. But it's got a good holder on it. Michael sells these. Um, so I use these for a lot of different things. Now some people don't care for them because it will leave a little bit of a texture. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got a little bit of a texture on it because it leaves little bubbles. But right after you do it, if you just kind of, real easy, because you'll blow the paint everywhere, but just, just kind of blow it, the bubbles will go down. And you can even go back and fill them in a little bit with your brush if you want to. But I always get mine wet. I just dip it in my water. Spun, I mean, squeeze it out good, because you don't want it real wet. You just want it just damp, and I'm going to daub it on my paper towel. So we're going to get, let's start with, I'm starting with pink. And this is Anita's paint. Um, I got it at Hobby Lobby. And this color is Carmen, Carmine, I guess is what you saw. Carmine pink. So it's kind of a hot pink. Shake it up really good. And it doesn't take a lot. Put it out in about a, about the size of a quarter, about the size circle of what you're going to be using, whatever size dauber you're going to be using, the pouncers. So I'm going to put some right here, just next to my white. Now see, that came out a lot easier. Not quite as thick. So we're going to get... Hi, Crystal. Hope you're enjoying this rainy day. At least the lightning and thunder has stopped. I can hear the birds singing again. So you're just going to get it on... Now see how thick that is? You don't want that. So you want to wipe most of it off. I'm just going to wipe it right up here and I'm just going to kind of pounce, pounce it in a little bit, a little bit more and just squeeze it down in there. Pick where you want your first circle. So I'm going to do mine up here on the tip of the ear and I'm going to do it half off and half on. Make sure you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so half off, half on, and I'm going to press down, halfway push, halfway round, and up. So you're going to push, turn about halfway, and lift up. And there's your first circle. And that's just a half circle. Now there's a little bit of a drip on that edge, so take your brush and just go ahead and do your edge as well. Like we did the nose, just bring it down, finish it out, turn it around a little bit, right where that circle stops, that's where your brush will stop on the edge. 
Okay, so you've got your edge done, and you've got your first circle. There we go, our first dot. Now there's a secret to dots, so that you don't get in a, as I've heard many say, a polka dot dilemma. You don't want one row of polka dots here and half a row there. So if you will do them in a triangular, just kind of a triangular shape. Let's see. Let me get a little more paint. So I'm gonna load it again, kind of daub some of it off. And let's see where we want our next. So this one's gonna be half on, half off. I'm gonna do it right here at the front of her ear. Her very her front ear, and we're going to right in the middle, press down, half turn, and up. Kind of blow those bubbles out. There we go. So we've got one there. Now we'll come and do a triangle with a different color here in a minute. So we can kind of do our triangle. And when I say triangle, I mean there's going to be one here, one here, and one here. And that'll make a triangle shape. And then we can make keep going with a triangle pattern. So I've got that dripping off the end there. See how it's dripping down? So take your brush, smooth it down on that edge, all the way to the end of where your circle stops. Okay, so we've got our second circle, polka dot. And then we're gonna come through and put some details on those polka dots here in a minute. And remember, I always keep a wet rag. It's real damp, and I lay my brushes on that. Kind of keep those uh, bristles moist. Okay, so let's figure out where we want the rest of our pink polka dots. Hi, Susan. Hope you got your candle. I sent your candle with, um, with Mandy, so I hope she got that to you. It was a pretty color. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little more paint because I'm running out of paint. And you don't want a ton of the same color ones because we're going to come back with this, these other colors here that we've got on it. Okay, so let's decide where we want another pink. Let's put another half circle about halfway down her back. So you're going to press down, half turn, and lift up. Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's do one right here in this uh, above her feet here, I guess you'd call it her feet. So this is going to be your first full circle. So it's gonna be all the way down. Press down just a little bit, not a lot. Half turn, don't move it, half turn, and lift it up. Okay, now I need to smooth out that one that we did on the edge because it's dripping here. So we're gonna smooth it out all the way to the end of our dot. And there we go. Oh, I was telling you a minute ago, I did hear that uh, Michael's, some of you that are running out of supplies, Michael's is doing uh, curb service. So if you call them ahead of time, they are still open. They're doing curb service and um, we'll bring it out to you if you just call them and order ahead of time. Hopefully Hobby Lobby will do that as well. But And I don't know if it's all of the Michael's, but I do know some of them um, are doing that for everyone. Okay, so I'm going to put one. So one, two, three, four. Let's put one right down here by the tail. And you can pretty you can put them anywhere you want, but let's put this one here. I'm going to put mine here, and I'm not going to get it off the edge. So down, halfway up. There we go. Okay, so let's see, do we need a pink one anywhere else? Okay, let's stop with the pink for now. So I'm just gonna drop that in my cup of water and I've got another one here. Get it a little bit wet. And next let's go with our purple. This is also Anita's and it's crocus, crocus purple. But just any bright purple. Or if you want pastels, you can do pastels. Okay, so about the size of a quarter. And then we'll reload it here again in a minute. 
get it on your on your um, spouncer. All make sure it's on the edges too. I think I need a little bit more. That Anita's paint's a little bit thick too, a little bit thicker than the Deco Art. Sure, it's a pretty color. Okay, so I'm gonna load it up. Really getting it loaded, but then I'm gonna get most of it off or a lot of it off, because I don't want all of it on there. I don't want it really sticking up. Okay, so <clears throat> when we said triangle, so here's one, two, and we'll put a half one here. That'll make a triangle there. You could make a triangle if you were connecting them with a pencil. We're gonna go half on, half off with this one. So down, halfway turn, and up. And I'm gonna go back over that one, because that one got a little rough. Okay, so let's smooth those edges out. There we go. Okay, so we've got a purple one. And sometimes what I do, you can see that purple there has got a little bit of a rough edge around it. And it's just hard not to do that with these bouncers, but I'll go back with my liner brush sometimes and uh, kind of clean them up just a little bit. But for this sake, for right now, for time's sake, I can do that later. So I just messed that one up with my brush. So I'm down, around, and up. Okay, get a little bit more on there. Pounce it off. And let's go right above here. We're going to do another triangle, and that one's going to be right in the middle. Down, around, and up. Okay, get a little more paint. Do anybody, do any of you have plans for when we can all get back together again? Do you have a, a reunion party planned or anything like that? I know, I cannot wait. I'm, I'm just chomping at the bit to have another paint party. Okay, so I'm going to put one, the one, two, three. We're going to put one right here. And I'm going to put it over this side, this side. Just kind of connect that ear. Down and around it up. There we go. Now i got to do the edge on that one because that one's coming off the edge. So I want to paint down on the edge. Now be sure, don't put one, we're going to do some eyelashes, so don't put one where her eyelashes would be. Just leave that blank. Alright, let me get my brush here and smooth it down on that edge. I know a lot of you are watching the replays of this that aren't able to do the the lives I've been getting so many comments and that the kids especially are just loving doing this I'm so glad it's giving y'all something to do I hope in the future to have a membership <clears throat> where we can do some things and as a special paint party club I've already got the name for it and everything just just not quite there yet okay so let's put one more purple one <clears throat> Let's put it right here, and that'll be our triangle there. So we're going to put it part ways off and part ways on, down and around halfway and up. Okay, so we've got that one on there, and I'm done with the purple for now. So I'm going to put that back in the water. Let me fix my edge on that. Oh, that one's really dripping. There we go. Just kind of wipe it off with your brush. Put down in that corner there. Okay, then I got some on the table there, so I'm going to get that pulled up here. Now, the only thing about these from Dollar General. I do not like how they put their stickers on. These were just $2. But these stickers on the other side, I mean, what if you wanted to paint something on the other side? 
The sticker takes up half the egg and they, let me tell you, they are glued down. It took me forever to get it off of um, the other one here. So probably won't be painting on the other sides of those. Okay, so we've done pink and purple and I'm not really liking her nose color. So I'm probably gonna go back with a lighter pink over that here in just a little bit. But let's do, um, let's do yellow now. Let's see. I'm gonna have to clean one of my spouncers out. I'm gonna really clean it out with that water. I'm pouncing it, pouncing it in my cup of water here. Just really getting it clean and then I'm gonna wipe it off with my, my rag, my clean rag. And then I'm gonna dry it with a paper towel to make sure all that, because I used purple on that one and I don't want purple in my yellow. So I'm really drying that out good. Always have paper towels and baby wipes. <clears throat> okay, and I'm drying that really good. Now, if you had 10 or 12 of these, which I do somewhere over there, but you could just go on to the next one and use a, a different one. And you could also do your dots. Um, if you wanted to do some big ones and some little ones, you could do that as well. But let's go ahead and get our dots all done so we can start putting some of the details on it. Okay, so we're gonna use yellow now. And that is the cadmium yellow, and that is deco art, cadmium yellow. It covers really well, and it's, uh, it's a bright, pretty yellow. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit right here in the middle of the plate, about the size of a quarter. Make sure I got all that purple out. There we go. Okay, so make sure you get it on the edges too. All the way around here. Got it on and then daub it a little bit of it off. I think I'm gonna have a little bit more. I had a customer at the bank yesterday and um, turned out he was a manager at a Hobby Lobby somewhere in Oklahoma and I said, I'm so sorry that y'all had to close. He said, oh, so are we. I said, surely they understand that crafting is essential. Okay, so we're going to find a triangle here. So here's one, one, two, let's put one right there. And we'll put it right above the tail, down, halfway around, and up. Blowing some of those bubbles out. Now, let me pause right here to tell you, if you don't have a, one of these pouncers, and I should have showed you that in the beginning, you can take any, uh, a brush. Let's use a, oh, let's use a little filbert brush. All right, tell you what, let's use a little flat brush because some of you may not have a filbert brush. Remember the filbert brush is the one that has the curved, the curved end. And that's really good for doing flower petals and circles. So let's use a, um, <clears throat> just a flat brush. This is a number 10. Get it wet just a little bit. And let me show you how to make a, a circle if you just have brushes. If you're not good at just freehanding it, you could take and draw you a circle all the way around there very lightly and you could fill it in that way just fill the circle in hold it straight up and down like this crystal this is also the way you would do your flower petals on the boot that we painted so you would hold it down like that and it would take about two coats so you're just swirling it around with your between your thumb and your middle finger you're kind of swirling it let it dry and then fill it in again. Or one more way you could do it. Let's go ahead and try that filbert brush. See what I've got here. This is a number eight filbert. Let's do purple this time. Now on the poster board, it's gonna feel a little different because it's paper and it really soaks it up. I, I always paint on the shiny side. 
But to do it with a, a paintbrush, you could use the round paintbrush or the filbert paintbrush. And I'm using the filbert right now. But you're going to make a C or a backward C. So you're going to make a C. It's also called a comma stroke. Okay, and wherever you finished right there, you're going to start where you finished and make another C and come all the way around. And then just fill it in. And you'll have to probably do a second coat on it. So let's do that one again. So you're going to make a C or a comma stroke. C. Get you some more paint on there. Come back with a backwards or a frontwards stroke, whichever way you started first. And just fill the circle in. So if you don't have the pouncer or the spouncer, you can do it that way too. Just draw you a circle and fill it in. Or make a frontwards and a backwards C and just fill it in. You can make any size circle you want doing it that way. <clears throat> now these uh, sponge pouncers, I think they're like $3.97 for a package of four at Walmart. And I do suggest that whether you're using the, the sponge pouncer or whether you're using a brush, I paint, I mean, I practice and practice and practice on poster board uh, or paper, paper plates. I mean, I really practice on something before I'm doing it for the first time. If I've never done it before, or if it's not turning out like I want, I will really practice on a piece of paper or poster board or something. Okay, so we need some little bit more yellow. How's everybody doing? You doing okay? Hi, Sherry. I'm not sure who's painting and who's just watching. Okay, so we got some paint on there. We're just kind of daubing it off a little bit because we don't want it super thick. And let's find another triangle pattern. Here's one, two, and we're going to put one right there. So that's one, two, three. That would make a triangle. That way you don't end up with all your polka dots in one little area. So we're going to push down. Just not all the way. You don't want the stick touching the piece. Halfway around and lift up. Now see all those bubbles? On, can you see them on that yellow one? I had a lot of paint on that one. Maybe a little too much. But that's got uh, a good circle on there. Okay. So let's find another one. We want some yellow up here in the ear. Let's do one about halfway. I'm getting a little more paint on there. Pounce it up and down. And let's do it about halfway. I'm going to take a pencil right quick. See where these eyelashes are on, on this finished one? I'm going to decide where do I want, where do I want my eye on this one. So... <clears throat> let's put her eyelashes right here little dot and I'm just gonna make one little line just kind of up in an upward motion and then we'll put the eyelashes on it in a minute can you see that just drew a little bit line where I want her eye so I don't end up painting over where we're gonna put the eye so I'm gonna put the yellow dot half on half off right there just above her eye lash where her eyelash is going down, up. Now that one's coming off of the edge, so I need to thin that out. I mean, uh, on the edge. Popping some of those bubbles with it. There we go. Now, got it on the edge too, so it's coming across the edge. Okay. All right, so I think we need, let's put a little bit of yellow on the toe. Down, around, and up. That's an edge piece. So what are we gonna do? Okay, Reagan, what are we gonna do? We're gonna bring it down across the edge. Y'all, Reagan, Reagan, I'm sorry, I can't remember if you're seven or eight. I can't remember how old you are. You've had so many birthdays. Um, 
But after watching the live video last week, she decided to do her own video. And let me tell you, she's pretty good. <laughs> I told her she's going to upstage me. She's going to be doing this more than I am before uh, before long. And she really did a, she showed us how to uh, cut out the letters uh, joy and decorate them. And she really narrated it well. I was very impressed. She's going to, she's going to be a movie star or something. Okay, so we've got some. I think I want to put just a little bit on the tip of this ear right here. I'm going to do it across. Let's do it over here because we're going to put some green over there. So down, around, and up. And my bunny rabbit moved. There we go. Okay, so let's bring that down on the edge. Oh, seven. Okay, so she's, Reagan is seven. Seven years old, and let me tell you, she rocked that video like she was a 30-year-old. At one point, there was a TV program in the background playing, and she said, oh, that's annoying. She said, oh, but wait, little children, I'm sorry for those of you who are little and like that. I'm sorry, but it just is. <laughs> so, I was, she did a, a fantastic job. Okay, so let's now, we've only got one more color. And so that's going to be the kind of lime green. Let me get my sponge wiped out here. Hang on just a second. I'm going to grab another sponge rather than take the time to wash that one out. Let me grab one. So let's do the green. Now my plate's getting pretty full, so I'm gonna go to a clean plate. The green that I've got here is Anita's. I got that at Hobby Lobby, and it is vert. No, it's lime. Yeah, I was trying to give it to you in um, a different language here. French, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's just lime green. It's just a bright, bright, bright green. Okay, about the size of a quarter, because that's about the size our sponges we're using. Get it on there, pounce it on there good, and then pounce part of it off. Okay, so let's put one right under where her eyes are going to go. Let's see if we want one there. Nope, I changed my mind. Let's put it right here where the neckline is, about half on, half off. Down we go, around, and up. Okay, and let's get it going on the edge here. Paint that edge really pretty. We had a, um, in the Painter's Clubhouse that I'm a part of with Southern Adornments Decor, uh, with Tamara, we had a Zoom call party uh, Tuesday night, I think, Thursday night, Thursday night, where we all Zoom in, I mean, we all come in on the Zoom call, and some of us just sit there and visit, but some are painting uh, <clears throat> while we're talking, but it was amazing how many different places that people were from while we were all sitting in our living rooms or our craft rooms or, or whatever, and painting and talking and getting to know each other. And there was somebody from New York, uh, someone from Pennsylvania. We would break out into breakout rooms and just have five or six people in there and get to know each other. And then we would all come back together. And then I found out that there's some, uh, some that live real close to me here. So it was so much fun. Okay, so we're going to put right here in the center of the two ears, off of the edge, the green. We're going to go down, around, and up. Okay, and let's smooth out that edge. Cover that edge good. And it really doesn't matter what brush you use doing that. Just so you get it smoothed down, it's not dripping everywhere for you. Where that dot ends. Okay, wash that color out good because we're going to need it here again in a minute. Okay, we're going to need some green. We can do a triangle right there. And 
pounce in it good. Let's put one right there. Down, halfway around, and up. And let's put one on a green one on the tail. Y'all look at my hands. I got paint all over me. I told you I'm a messy painter. I'm amazed. I better not say it or I will, but I'm amazed that I haven't gotten it all over my clothes yet. <clears throat> when I paint, when I'm just painting, not live, I have a couple of outfits that I wear that I don't care if I get paint on them, and they've got paint all over them. Okay, so we're going to go, let's just go half on, half off, because we don't want his whole tail to look, or her whole tail to look like it's the green, so let's just go half on, half off again. Down, push, halfway around, and up. And that one got a little bit of a ridge on it. There we go. Okay, and let's smooth out our edge. Now, if you don't have enough, of, enough drip to cover your edge with it, just dip your brush down in some of your paint on your plate or whatever you're using. You can use an egg carton, paper plate. A lot of people use tin foil, so you can use anything. Okay, let me look at that right quick. I'm going to put some green right above her nose, just half on, half off. I think it needs a, something to balance it out. Just a little one. Down, around, and up. There we go. Okay, let me get that edge. And we've got a lot done already. We are getting really close to putting all the little details on, and then we'll be done before we know it. This was a pretty, pretty easy one to do. Um, it just, anytime you've got details, it's going to take a little bit to do it. Let's see, do we want a little bitty one right? See how blank? Right in here where her face is. See how blank that is? I'm going to put one, a little bit smaller uh, pink dot on that one. I just want it filled in a little bit. So this is a little bit smaller one. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And squeeze it out good. So you'll learn to just kind of eye your pieces and see where you need something. And this one with it being pink is going to kind of look like a cheek. Okay, so all the way down, halfway around, and up. Whoop, that needs a little more paint on it. So down, around, and up. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm happy with that. Let's. I'm going to hit mine with the hair dryer right quick. Let me go ahead and get, I want a little bit different color on her nose. Let's see what I've got up here. And by the way, I did find that you can still buy these on Etsy. Amazon doesn't sell them anymore, but you can still find them on Etsy, and it is um, <clears throat> What We Made, and it's with What We Made with Robin and Dave, and it's called Paint Bottle Holder Wall Carrying Handle, with handle. Some of them have handles on them now. Okay, so I'm getting, uh, this is Poodle Skirt Pink. And that's what we're going to, I'm going to go over her nose because I wanted it a little bit brighter. That coral was just not quite the right color I wanted. So I've just got a little smaller filbert here. And I'm going to go over that with a little bit, oh yeah, with a little bit brighter pink. Okay. See the difference that made? That looks more like a bunny nose. The other color was just a little bit too dark. So I'm going to be sure and get my edges because I want it to match. And I'm doing this pretty fast for live. There will be some things I'll go back and touch up a little bit. Y'all let me know. I've been getting a lot of comments of uh, several of you that are watching and going back and doing the replays that you're really enjoying it. And um, 
I'm enjoying it so much. Just get to kind of connect with you, visit with you, especially right now, not getting to see each other. But if you have any suggestions or anything like that, um, you know, just drop a comment. Just let me know. Let's see here. Okay. Let me know how many of you. Did you, do you have the wood piece? Did you go out and find a wood piece or did you, um, <clears throat> did you trace it on something? And for those of you that are just hopping on, we might tomorrow try to do a quick decoupage. If you're out and about anywhere, if you can find uh, any kind of a wood piece, it doesn't even have to be this shape, but anything. We're going to maybe do some decoupaging with some pretty napkins. A two-ply is best. Uh, these are, these are two-ply, but um, I think we're going to do some decoupaging or mod podging on these. So you'll need mod podge. Uh, you'll need some white paint and a brush to put the bottom coat on it. And that's really about all you'll need. So, um, and just a, maybe a emery board or a little bit of piece of sandpaper to uh, get it off of the edges. But So if you're out and about today or if you have some napkins, we're going to try to do that tomorrow if I have time. Okay, so while the dots are drying, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do her eyelashes. And for that, you're going to need liner brush and this is the liner brush remember the bristles are really long it's also called a script brush this one is a number two and it's the low cornell one of my favorite brushes i like the low cornell i also like the plaid brushes but very very long very long okay i'm gonna get it a little bit wet and we're gonna need black so put and it doesn't take much black is very very overpowering it takes um just a very little bit of it so we're going to put black here just a i mean just a little dot you can always come back and put more now i like to leave my brush a little damp i don't really dry it out good uh just a little damp and we're going to lay it in it and roll it out just lay it in there roll it out get it good and thick but to a point you want your liner brush the tip of it to be at a point and where you drew that eyelash, now be careful if your circles are not clean, are not real good and dry. Don't lay your hand on one that's not dry. In fact, I think I'm going to hit this with a hairdryer real quick just to make sure. Good enough. Okay, so we got our liner brush lo uh, loaded up here. Just pulling it out, making it to a point. Now I find that it's easier to, to get a starting point and push away from me when I'm doing liner work than it is to try to bring it into me. So whatever you're most comfortable with, that, that's what matters. Uh, whatever your hand is most comfortable with. Now that that's dry, I can lay my hand down here on the piece and use it as a guide. So I'm going to start here and let me show you on the paper first. <clears throat> Got our pencil mark here. Okay, let's pretend like this is our eyelash. She's just going to have kind of a closed eye. So I've got it here and I'm going to lay it down. I've got my, the bottom of my hand on the piece here to kind of guide me and steady me. And I'm going to put it down and just flick it out. And then we're going to come right back, load it again a little bit, start down a little bit from where you started and just start right on that line and go up and flick it out a little bit above it. Same thing one more time. Down and flick it out above it. Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit more on my brush. We're going to do it again on the paper. So I'm going to make my bottom eyelash down and up. Almost like a half U, I guess. Start right about where you started. I didn't have my point good, so that'll make a difference. And you can use a smaller liner brush, too. They've got all the way down to size zero. And that might be a little easier for you until you get really comfortable with it. So we're going to go down and up. Down and up. Okay, so all the way down, up, 
end up. That one's a little bit thicker. The more pressure that you put on the brush, let's do that again. Okay, the more pressure, the more I press down, the wider it's going to be. And then I lift up and it gets smaller. Now, if I want it very little, I don't put much pressure on it at all. I'm just touching it with that tip. So I'm just very easily. Now see the difference in the thickness of those lines? The more pressure you put on it, the bigger the stroke's going to be. So if you don't want a big stroke, just very, very lightly touch it. You can always come back and add more. So the more you push, the bigger it's going to be. Okay, so now let's really put it on the piece. <clears throat> and I don't want it really, really wide. So I'm going to load my brush again, and I'm going to twirl it out to kind of get that point on it. And I'm not going to put much pressure at all. And I'm going to hold this down flat so I can easy, easily put my hand down on it. And you're just going to start and then flick out. Okay, so there's our bottom one. Roll your brush in that paint again. Pull it out to a point. Start just about where you started for the, with the bottom one. And flick out. Barely pushing down and I'm going to do one more and I'm going to start right about where I started and then right where this one starts going up I'm going to come up just a little before that one. So down and up. Okay and there's our eyelash on that one and I messed that one up just a tad. Let me go back over it just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now she's got an eye, and it didn't take much, just those eyelashes, and it kind of brought her to life. She's got an eye there. Okay, so we're going to use the liner brush again. <coughs> now, I'm going to show you one more thing, <clears throat> and you can do this at your own pace after we get through, because I have a special little tool. See how it's raised up here, and how it is... This one's got one, two, three, four, five circles on it. And it's got a little handle that goes with it, but I don't use it. I just use this. I don't know that they even make these anymore, but I've got all different designs. But you can do the same thing with the tip of a, of a paintbrush. But see the little flowers all around her? That's what I used to do that. But I'm going to show you how to do it with just using the end of your brush. But then for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and use my little tool that I've got. So let's go ahead and start with the, um, let's start with pink centers. So I am going to get, let's see what size brush I want to do this with. Really doesn't matter, but let's do it with that number 10 that we were, or 12 that we were using, the 12 flat. It's got a nice rounded edge on it. So let's use that one. So we're going to do the, the bright pink. Now to do this, remember when we were making our dots last week, when you're doing, you're going to be doing dots, you want it kind of deep so you can get a good drip on it. See how deep that is? So I'm just going to dip it in it and I'm not going to use the bristles of my brush at all. We're just going to use the tip and we're going to do the center. We're going to figure out where we want the flowers to have pink centers. So I'm just kind of scooping it up a little bit. And you want it to almost dripping off of the end. There, okay? See the centers of the flowers? Each one has a different flower center. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go around and just, just kind of pick and choose where you want a pink one. So I'm gonna try to put, I'm gonna put a pink one here. And you're gonna wanna reload the tip of that brush every time. And let's do a pink center, maybe right here. And it's really up to you. Okay. Now, uh, go around and do that. Now I'm going to use uh, purple for my my piece. Now, if you were doing this with with your paintbrush. You get purple on the end of it this time. 
and we're going to do five little petals, five little dots for petals. So here's that. Now remember, the dots take a long time to dry, so if you haven't dried it with a hair dryer, it's going to be very wet. And your hand will drag all through it, so we're getting it kind of drippy on the end of that. See how it's dripping on the end of it? And we're going to go one, two, dip it again, three, make that one a little bigger, three, four, and five. Okay, so let's go up here and do the same thing around this one. Now, I would hold it up and show you, but if I do that, they're going to drip. They're going to start dripping down because those are really thick. Really deep, so it takes them like a puddle. It takes them a little while to dry unless you're doing it with the hair dryer. Okay, so we're going to go around this pink one. One. Two. Three, four, and five. Okay, so can you see that? You got your flower there. Now I'm going to go around just to save some time, and I'm going to use my uh, my little tool that I've got. Let me do one more pink one up here since I've already started it that way. Let's do that right there, pink center. And one, two, three, four, and five. Now let's do yellow flower. Where did our yellow go? There we go. About the size of a quarter because that's the size that the tool is and I want it kind of deep so that I can really dip that down in there just pretend like these are the ends of paint brushes because that's just the shape that it is it's just got them all on there once for me so I'm gonna go ahead and hi Lisa glad you're watching Lisa's one of my other daughters we are painting if you just got on we're painting an Easter Bunny We've already base coated her. I've been calling him him, but I think it's a her because <clears throat> she's got pretty eyelashes. And I'm showing this tool that I've got, but if you don't have this, remember, just like we just did, you can use the end of your, uh, the wood end of your paintbrush. Okay, this one, I'm going to go right down here and I'm just going to press it down. One. And we'll do one right here. Two. Okay, we may come back and do another yellow one. <clears throat> and then for the yellow, let's do a green center, the lime green that we had. So Lisa, are you at home or at your, are you at your mom and dad's? Jennifer's been staying with us. She went home for the weekend, but she'll be back. Hi, Courtney. Glad to see you on. I'm so glad that you like it. It's so much fun and it's such an easy piece to do. I've got so many things to that I want to show you all at once, but, but we can't do it all in one thing. But if you're out and about today and want to get some pretty napkins, um, I think we're going to try to come on tomorrow, probably around 2, not sure. Be sure and click the little thing that says if you'd like to be notified when I go live, um, and that will notify you when we're going to do it. But I've got an egg, but it doesn't matter what you have. We're going to do some Mod Podge. If you have some Mod Podge, uh, we're going to put a pretty napkin on this and do some different things with that tomorrow, hopefully. And then we've got something fun for next week, too. So let's go ahead and get this finished up. So I'm going to go do some green centers on that one. And I'm using the tip of my brush, just like you're doing your little petals, right in the middle. I do flowers a lot when I'm doing um, especially little girl pieces. <clears throat> okay, so let's do a green flower somewhere. Get enough paint. 
on there. It's getting a little dry. Okay, let's do... Let's do one right here in the middle. Okay, so we've got a green flower there. I'm going to do one up top here. And I always wash these off real fast because I don't want that paint drying on them. It's, it's harder to get off if you let it dry. Okay, so I'm going to thicken those little dots up just a little bit with the tip of my brush. And for those of you just joining us, um, I am Pam Savage, and I'm with Young at Heart Creations. When we don't have a pandemic going on, I do paint parties. I come to your house. I come to your school. Uh, if you want to have it at your church building, um, and we do paint parties. We have door prizes. If you're the hostess, you don't pay anything. Um, you don't pay anything and you get a nice prize um, for that. Um, and it's different all the time. You never know what it's going to be. But you do, uh, you do not pay anything. And we can do it wherever you want to do it. I supply all of the supplies. I bring everything that we need to paint. Okay, so let's do a purple center in the green ones. And we just have so much fun. Uh, it's more one-on-one, -on -one, and I help you really learn uh, what we're doing. I'll show you the piece. Uh, we have two or three different pieces that you can pick. You'll have a choice to, to choose from. All right, let's get a little more purple in there so we can do some purple centers on these. Um, got a um, co-worker that's getting married in a few months, and we're going to do a, a bridal paint party with her in her uh, bridal party. We're gonna do a paint party. and We're uh, probably gonna do, uh, everybody's gonna do their own big initial that'll be real fancy and pretty. Um, so I'm real excited about that. Can't wait, can't wait to do that one. It is $35 per person. So if you're interested in that, just go to my business page, Young at Heart Creation. Uh, send me a message, or most of you that are on here right now have my, my phone number. You can send me a text and as soon as all this is over with, we'll get started back up with parties. We were sure having fun with them. Okay, so now we're going to do the center of the green flowers that I just did. That one was pretty, pretty thick. Okay, so we've got some flowers there. I think we need a little flower down here by the tail. We don't have any pink flowers. Let's do a pink one. And I'm just gonna use the end of my brush. And that paint's getting a little bit dry, so let me put a little bit more in there. Because I don't think my tool would fit all the way in there. So let's just go ahead and use the tip of your brush. One, two, three, four, five. And let's put another pink one. Where do we want another pink one? Let's put one right here. Is everybody pretty much to where I am with your dots? Are you catching up? <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, get a little bit more paint, four, five. Now let's put a center in them. And let's put a yellow center. We don't have a yellow center yet, so let's do yellow. One. Here. 
Okay. I think we'll stop with the flowers. <clears throat> All right, bear with me while we dry it with the hair dryer. And if you have a dry hair dryer handy, you might want to do this too. Now, when you're drying these dots, they're very, very wet and very, very puddly. So you don't want to get your hair dryer right down on them or it's going to splatter your paint everywhere. Now on this one, that might look cute with all the splatter colors, but you don't want to do that. So hold it kind of up away from it. I'm going to hold it away from my plate up here. Okay, that was still too close. I've got one that was splattering. So I'm going to put it on low. In fact, let me get my Q-tip right quick and get that off. Spit, remember? Spit's a good friend too because the enzymes in your spit, for some reason, break down that paint. And don't put paint in your mouth. There we go. Marla, do you still have your... Um, do you still have your rabbits, your pet rabbits? And Marla, also Michaels is doing <clears throat> a curb service. You can get paint from uh, some of the Michaels. You'll have to check and see if they're open, but they will. Okay, so let me finish drying these right quick. I see one that needs a little more in it. Okay, let me hit it with the dryer. <coughs> I'll get them almost dry on low and then I'll hit them with the high heat. Lisa also paints and makes crafts for the craft show that we have in November. Um, I've been working on a lot of things for that and I, I know she helps with their booth that I was telling you about. She's very crafty as well. Alright, I'm going to hit it on high for just a few minutes. Okay, now those aren't completely dry, but they're dry enough for me to go go ahead and go on. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is inside the circles, inside the polka dots, I'm, I'm doing white with our liner brush. I'm doing white and then I'm doing black just to give it a little pop. And that's just like we were doing the when I showed you how to do the backward C and frontward C. That's all we're doing with this liner brush. And you want to get your paint just a little bit watered down, just a little bit of liquid on here. And then you're just going to, with this liner brush, swap it around. But now remember, on the one we're doing right now, your dots are probably not completely dry. So be sure and don't lay your hand down in them. I can see that some of mine are still not dry. They're shiny. And when they're shiny, I know that they're not completely dry yet. So I'm going to have to hold my hand up, not lay it down on the wood, and go all the way around. I'm gonna go halfway around with the white and, and the black. So I've already got some black out, so I'm gonna go ahead and I've got just a little bit of water in my brush and I'm dripping that water down in it just to kind of get it inky, uh, ink consistency. <clears throat> okay, so let's go around each one and on one side of it, We'll do the black and then come around on the other side and do the white. Doesn't matter which side you do it on. So just take your liner brush that you've got, got ready to go. And let's start up here on the ears. I'm going to do one on the bottom here. Around. And you can probably do it a couple of times. And then on just this side of the uh, green circle, I'm going to go part ways around. All the way around. And remember, the more you press down, the fatter your stroke will be. The more pressure you put on it, the fatter it will be. 
Now I'm going to go a different direction here with this one. I'm going to start up here at the top and go about halfway down. So start, go, 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 lift up. Do you like that, Reagan? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Hi, Rhonda Hunter. Rhonda Hunter can paint too. She just doesn't know it yet. She painted a real pretty flower at my very first uh, paint party. And it turned out to be uh, at least half the class's favorite flower. Um, so I'm still trying to get her back into doing another one. But she's very good. Okay, so we're going to go all, we're going to do all black and then we'll come back with the white. So let's do the bottom of this one, black. Let's go, well, let's start over here. I'm sorry, let's start about the middle at the bottom and come up all the way and flick it up. And remember, we don't want a whole lot of pressure on the on these. So we'll go, we're gonna start at the middle and go the other direction. We're gonna start in the middle and go up. Now y'all are going to see me moving my piece around when I'm not painting live. I move my piece around however it's more comfortable for me for whatever I'm doing at the moment. Um, and so I'm trying to get used to doing this so that, that you guys can see it. And let me know if you can't see what I'm doing. Um, you know, let me know if I need to get the camera closer and get my face out of it and get you closer down to what I'm doing. And Marla says she still has six bunnies. She's got pet bunnies. Um, and they're so cute. But... She's had them for I don't know, at, least, at least a couple of years now or, or more. Okay, so this purple one. Well, we've got a couple more up top here. Let's do them. So we'll just start here. And around. And if you don't have a liner brush, you can use a little round brush. The liner one has those long, long bristles, and it just makes it really easy to do thin line work like the eyelashes that we did a minute ago. Okay, and I'm going to come on this side and just about halfway because remember we're going to come back in white and do <clears throat> on the other side. And I'm reloading my brush about every two strokes that we do. So I've got this black one on this side, so I'm going to come over here and be sure and watch your dots. Don't lay your hand in your dots. All the way around there. And let's do this one on the bottom. There we go. Okay, we're almost done with this and we're gonna do the white in the circles. And then we're just gonna do some outline work on the bottom, I mean, around the edges and we're done. You'll have to seal it, of course, and I'll show you what sealer I use here in just a minute. So let's do, oh, we forgot the one in the middle. Around. Go around on this one. Okay, now that you've been seeing what I'm doing, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Okay, so around. Uh, we'll go around this side on this one. Let's do the top on this one. And I'm loading my brush over here each, about every two times or so. Okay, on the side. All right, who has laid their hand in one of their dots? Has anybody done that yet? Who's gotten paint on them from forgetting about their dots and laid it on there? I've done that so many times. Not only does it get all over you, but then you have to clean it up on your piece. Okay, so we did that one on that side. So let's go on this side and do this one. There we go. Hi, Mom. My mom, Peggy, just got on. She's my biggest fan. Okay, so we're going to go... Let's do this one on this side. And I've got some dots down here. So I'm using my pinky finger to put on the wood and raise it my hand up over it. There we go. Okay, just got a couple more. And remember, practice, practice, practice like we did on this poster board. Practice whatever you're doing. In just a second, I'll get you a uh, piece of paper and show you where I've been practicing roses, how to learn how to do roses on poster board. I'll grab that for you here in just a second. Okay, so let's go around this way. And let's do this one that way. Okay. 
All right, wash that brush out really good because that black will take over the white we're about to use if you don't. Okay, so I'm going to get just a little puddle of white. I'm going to get a little bit of moisture in that liner brush. Now, we're not doing any of the shading and floating like we did last time um, on the piece that we did on that flower. You remember the flower? There's the flower that we did last week. This flower, we did a lot of the shading and highlighting. You learned a lot of the technique on that. And we'll do that a lot more. Uh, but that's not what we're doing on this one. Now, if you wanted to give it a little bit of depth, and I probably will do that later on, but you could shade a little light gray around each circle. And that would make it kind of stand like a 3D. <clears throat> you can do that. But for time's sake, we're not going to do it on this one. Okay, so now we're doing... Exactly what we did with the black in the circles, we're going to go around and do it in the white. So I'm going to start about halfway in the middle where my black one was and go around. Now look how that white just makes it pop. All right, let's get some on our pink. And let's see, for the pink, let's start about... Well, let's just go ahead and do it like we got that one. We'll start about halfway in the middle of where the black is. And around. Okay, for the green, I try to go the opposite direction of where the black is. So we're going to start about halfway here. Right out to that edge. And here's the purple. I'm going to start right, about right in the center of where the black line is. All the way around. And you're going to do that to all your dots. Around there. And let's go here with this one. And you could even go back and put a third color in it. Um, if you wanted to put a color of one of your other colors, like the pink, you could put um, some another purple line or um, as many as you want. Okay, so let's start about center here where this black one is. And notice how I'm still using my finger down here to kind of guide me to as a rest. And I'm being very careful not to get in those dots. So I've got my brush loaded good. Roll it out, get that point on it. And all the way around. Almost all the way around. Just gives it a little depth, a little more interest. I'm going to get a little bit more water on my... If you notice that your brush is dragging, the paint's dragging a little bit, just get a little more moisture on it. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around, and I'm almost standing all the way up with this one. All the way around. Okay, oh, I've got to watch those dots. So let's go here with this one. And we'll do one there. And... Let's do one at the top there. Almost done with these. Let's see, let me turn it back around this way. Okay, now that one I met myself. I started at the other end and met in the middle there. And we're going to go around. It really shows up on the purple. Around there. And let's do this pink one in the middle. Now remember, around the edges of where we did our circles, some of them are a little rough, so I'm going to go back with white. And <clears throat> I'm just going to touch up around where they're just a little rough. Like that pink one there. Right here is a little rough around the edge. So I'll go back with white and clean it up just a little bit afterwards. Okay, let's see. We need some on this one. Yeah, let's put some on this green one. And I think one more with that. Okay, so we're done with our highlights in our circles. Almost makes it look like bubbles. 
Now we're going to go back with the black, look at our finished bunny, and right along the edges up here, you see the little squigglies? So I squiggle a little bit, and with the tip of your brush, unless you have a tool, uh, remember last week I told you you could get these tools at Hobby Lobby, these styluses, and they've got different dot sizes on the ends of them. And that's, those are really good to make dots with. That's what I use. And that's what I'm going to use today to make the dots with. <clears throat> but you can still use, here's the bigger one. That's the one I'm going to use. Uh, but you can still use the tip of the, the wood part of your brush. So let's go, let's do that. And we're going to, you're learning a lot with the liner brush today. So you're getting a lot of work on that. Now let's show you on the paper. Let me get the paper. Whereas a minute ago, we were just doing straight lines and kind of curving them up. This time, I'm going to have to get some more black paint, but um, I'm getting a little bit of moisture in it because I want it to like an ink consistency. And we're going to do squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. And I pressed down here first a little heavier, so that made it fatter. The lighter touch that you have squiggle squiggle the lighter your line's going to be so get you some black paint <clears throat> if you want to practice on the paper first let's see where'd our black go there we go put a little bit more in there and it doesn't take much we're not going to use a bunch okay so i'm loading loading that brush Hi, Julie. Hope y'all are staying safe. We decided we we're going to paint today. It's rainy and stormy here, and what better time to paint? We were, I was telling Ray, we were noticing the beautiful blue bonnets everywhere. <clears throat> okay, so all we have left to do now is go around each edge. Now, I didn't go over the bubbles with the black on on this i just went in between them so i don't like i don't have any black squigglies on my bubbles that are close to the edge i just went in between them so let's do that i'm gonna get you a little bit closer here maybe there we go <clears throat> okay so we're gonna let's start here's a little bitty one and we're just gonna do squiggle we're not gonna do straight lines we're gonna do squiggles so squiggle there we go. Not anywhere to really put dots there. We'll do a squiggle here. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Little squiggle there. Little one there. Okay, now we'll have room for dots here. So let's put our dots. Let me get my little daughter. Now you're going to use um, the tip of your brush if you don't have one of these. Just dip it in your black paint. Let's figure out where we want our dots. So we want one, two, three. Real close together there. And I'm going to wipe that off because I don't want it dried on there. And then we'll do a squiggle from the nose. Now be careful with your flower dots. They're still wet because we didn't finish drying them. So squiggle. And then squiggle. Okay. Now let's squiggle down here. I've got a bunch of belly here, so we're gonna squiggle about halfway. Not quite halfway, because we, we're gonna put some dots. If it makes it easier for you, go ahead and decide where you want your dots. So let's put dot, dot, I'm gonna dip it again, and dot. Wipe that off. All right, let's get some skiggles. skiggles. Let's get some swiggles. Squiggle. Need a little more moisture in my paint because it's kind of dragging. Okay, we're gonna squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Squiggle. And let's put dot, dot, dot. Squiggle. Reagan, how are you liking this squiggling? Are you doing it? Let 
A lot of people are really, really afraid of the liner brush, but once you get used to using it, I think it'll be one of your favorites. You can do so many things with it. Okay, so we're gonna squiggle right here, right up to where that tail starts. And I'm gonna put some dots. One, two, three. And these are just in random spots. Squiggle. And again, I'm not getting them on the bubbles. And let's put dots right there, there, and there. Uh, if you're just coming on, I see some new ones on. Um, <clears throat> hoping in the future to get a, a membership going where we have kind of a painting club. Um, I, I do have a, a name for it and just got to get things going with that. I have found uh, someone that's uh, willing to cut wood for me. I've cut wood for years and years and years, but with my job and everything, I just don't have time to cut it and paint both. So I am working on a lot of things so that I can get y'all pieces that we'll be doing. Um, I'm trying to get ready for the craft show in November. All, a lot of the stuff that I paint will be will be in that, that show. All right, let's do a squiggle here. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Let's do some more dots. <clears throat> Got a lot of techniques that um, I really want to teach you. I want to teach you how to do buffalo plaid. That is so much fun. I just love, love, love doing it. Um, Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor had a challenge uh, oh, about a year ago, last spring, I guess, and taught us how to do that. And it looked so hard, you know, at first, but it, it wasn't at all. It was so easy. Okay, so this little flower is almost on the edge here, so I'm going to squiggle in between that. And I can't wait to show you how to do... Um, some really, really simple, simple flowers that you'll be amazed how easy they are, but what a difference they make um, in your piece, what you're doing. Okay, let's see. Let's put some dots right here, and we won't have a squiggle. We'll just have dots there. Okay, and squiggle. Okay, so let that dry good, and we'll hit it with a hair dryer in just a minute. So while I'm waiting on that to dry, on some of these uh, dots that we did that I said was, you know, kind of rough, those sponges sometimes don't have a really even edge. And for some people, that does not bother them at all. Most of you know I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to the painting, so I have to clean it up. I, can't, I just can't not clean it up. So I'm just going around it just a little bit where those edges are rough. Smoothing it out. And you can't even tell that it was there. Especially if it's something that I'm selling. I like for it to be clean, but it also makes it look handmade. So it really doesn't matter. Now, I decided on this one real quick and you can get this at Hobby Lobby, and I think that, um, I think Walmart has it too. I'm really not sure. But I'm going to put a little bit of glitter on the circles now that the dots are dry. So this is called Deco, oh, it's Deco Art, and it's Soft Glittering Top Coat. You can get glitter in all different colors. This is just kind of a white glitter. So I'm going to put, just so I've got a little bit of a shimmer on it, when it dries, your, um, your glitter will show. I'm not sure if you can see it in this one. Can you see all the glitter on the flowers? It just really makes them stand out. And so I really like the glitter, especially on um, Christmas items and snow. But it's going to give this one just a little bit of a boost, I think. So I'm just going to paint just on the circles. And I'm just going to rub it on there. And it'll look kind of milky at first when you put it on, but then it, it'll dry and you won't see the milkiness. You'll just see the glitter and it'll just give it a little bit of shimmer. So I'm going to do that on each one of my dots and I'm not even being really careful. I'm just staying within the circles. I like 
jacket shiny. I'm going to be working this week on a um, little girl's ironing board. I'm going to be doing flowers on that. If I can figure out how to do it under the camera and to where y'all can see me do it, because it's a little bit odd shaped, and I don't know if it would fit back here in my little space, but I may just show you the progress as I'm going. Okay, let's get some on that one. I know there aren't many Easter plans going on tomorrow as far as Easter egg hunts, not only with the virus going on, but uh, with our weather here, there wouldn't be any anyway. They would have to do them indoors probably, but I thought maybe this would help get a little bit of the Easter spirit. All the Easter colors. Okay, those of you that are painting along right now, uh, oh, Reagan says she's loving it. Great, great, great. I'm so glad. I think I know my granddaughter was going to try to paint one too. We just live um, from uh, my son Darren and his family. We just live literally five houses from them. And because of this virus, we have not, we've seen them from the road and waved and, um, but we've had to stay away from them um, just to be careful and you want to be cautious that so we have not seen them or hugged them or hugged my babies in two weeks and it's been long enough. I'm really ready to see them and be with them. But to live five houses away, at least we get to wave and so what we're going to do tonight, our whole family, I've got uh, some that live in uh, right outside of Louisville, some that live right down by Fort Worth, and then my daughter that lives in uh, close to Dallas. She lives in uh, Rowlett. I think that's the name of it. She just moved there. Anyway, um, live there. And then my mom. But we're all going to do a Zoom call, a family FaceTime tonight, um, or either Zoom. I think we're going to do Zoom. But so we can all visit and uh, get to talk to each other. We're a very close family. We just, we like being together and, you know, we just don't like it when it goes this long. We we have to get together every now and then. We cook out and we do things together all the time. So this has been hard on us like everybody else, I'm sure. So we're looking forward to our family Zoom. Okay, now the only other thing that we need to do on this, of course, is put a hanger on the back like I showed you at the beginning of the show. Uh, so if you missed that, go back and watch the replay on uh, different ways that you can put hangers on it. You could make a bow. I've got, um, we'll do a tutorial sometime on making a bow, but I've got lots of Easter bows that we've been making. You could do a door hanger and you could put a, uh, a bow at the top of your hanger like I showed you in the beginning. So you could put just a simple little bow at the top and it just makes it really pop and look so pretty. Um, see if I've got me with a few more colors in it. This one's got, this one's got almost every color that's in the rabbit in it. Whoops, get over there. There we go. So you could do that with the jute and dress it up a little bit. Uh, at my paint parties, I always have bows to match whatever you're working on and I sell the bows uh, there. Okay, our little guy, little girl, is finished. Now, you wanna make sure it's good and dry with either your hair dryer um, or just let it sit for an hour or so and dry <clears throat> before you spray it. Um, but I always use, this is Minwax water-based. The water-based is very important because water-based does not yellow. And this is about the only one I have found that does not yellow. This is a clear satin, but you can also get it in gloss, semi-gloss or gloss. Um, I ordered it off of Amazon. Walmart used to carry it. I don't know if they still do or not. It's about 11 something a, a can, but it, it goes real far. So I always spray my pieces front. And, if, it, if you're gonna have it outside, I always do the back also. But um, if you're not gonna have it outside, then I just spray the front really, really well and I spray it real light, let the first coat dry about 15 minutes, outside of course, and then I go back and I'll do another coat, let it dry about 15 minutes, and then I do one more light coat over it so that I can wash it, you know, with just a damp cloth. You don't wanna get it real wet, uh, but that way if it gets dusty or anything, I can just wipe it off. 
one more thing on the nose. I just noticed I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight of white. Remember, if the <clears throat> if you're doing a, a color darker than what it is, then it's shading. If you're doing a color lighter than what it is, it's highlighting. So I'm going to highlight her little nose here with white just a little bit. Okay, do you have any other suggestions for her? Is there anything that you're doing differently how we're painting? I think she turned out real cute. I think it looks very Eastery. All those Easter colors, and I know Easter's tomorrow and it'll be over with for this year, but you'll have you a cute little, um, little piece to put on your door for next year. And um, I got these, these were $2, y'all. $2 uh, each at Dollar General. And, um, you know, if you mess that up, big deal, two bucks. But you can always paint over it and uh, something so easy to do. So I was determined we weren't going to go over two hours on this one, and we didn't. We're under, we're about 10 minutes <laughs> under, but I am just not a fast painter. I do a lot of detail in the things I do. Um, so they usually do end up being about two hours long, but I just feel like we had so much fun uh, doing it. And <clears throat> remember, if you're out and about today, get you some pretty, some kind of pretty napkins. This one has a rabbit on it. But you could get just floral, uh, any, color, any kind of design. Two-ply works best, but we're going to be doing some decoupaging tomorrow. And I'm going to do it on the egg. If we have time, we might do it on the rabbit as well. Um, but let me show you some of the pieces that I've already decoupaged. This is actually a banner. I haven't put the ribbon or string in it yet, but we did this in Nashville also. But um, see the little holes up at the top? And then you would, whoop, you would just make a little banner uh, with it. Now, these were all done with napkins. So let me show you the other side. This is what they all look like, just the blank wood. And then we just use the napkins, kind of like the one I had there. Here's the front part of one with napkin. Looks like you just spent all day painting it, doesn't it? Isn't that pretty? So we're going to do it with the Mod Podge. Here's a little carrot that we did. That's two different napkins. Uh, the top part was one part napkin. This was another one. <clears throat> and we used to do this when I was young all the time. Here's another one, two different napkins. One of the carrots. Um, here's a little chicken. The baby chick. That was butterflies. This one was very Eastery looking. All of this was done with the Mod Podge and um, napkins. And there's a little bunny. So we'll do that probably tomorrow around two-ish or so. Just be sure and hit the uh, notification down there to notify you when I go live. And we will um, start hopefully about two, but just hit that notification. And we'll do, if we have time, we'll do both tomorrow. If not, we will do um, the egg and I'll show you how to Mod Podge that. That's something the kids can do. You can do with the kids while we're all shut up with this uh, virus and um, something fun. Even the boys can do. I mean, I know it, the napkins are kind of girly, but they can still do it. Just something fun for them to do. So thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something on it. Again, please um, sprinkle the love and let everybody know about the lives that I'll be doing. I'll try to be doing at least one or two a week. There's just so, so much that I want to teach you, and I can't wait to get back to doing the paint parties. If you're interested in one, when all this is over, um, please let me know. They're so much fun. We uh, Again, we have door prizes. I teach you different things, different strategies, one-on-one, um, -on -one, and we, we just have so much fun. Uh, we've had five people. I've had 26 people, uh, you know, at a party, so... We can do it in your home. I can do it um, at your business. If you want a teacher, teachers get together, when we can all get together again. Uh, but just anything that, a birthday party, anything that you're interested in. So just let me know. Thanks everybody for watching. Love y'all. Bye-bye.